happiness through curiosity on TRS Clips. Is there a part of you that has a small fear in your heart that one day you'll be looking into your massive telescope and you'll find like a meteor that's heading towards the earth? Have um, you ever thought of this possibility? E yeah, so meteorites, the, the, the small particles do come, but then the, you know, the asteroids which come and kind of a strike kind of a thing. But with the bigger telescopes, of course, that could have happened long back. But right now, with the kind of mapping we have of the sky, we know, we will know its orbit very well ahead. How much ahead? Uh, to the extent that uh, I think we will know it in a few years ahead okay. of that, because we know we can trace its orbits. Okay. So right now, like you know, previously people used to think that okay, I have taken the picture of this part of the sky. Why should I keep going back to that part of the sky to take pictures? This sky is like you know it's uh, the stable. same yeah stable the same so there's no variation in the sky but now it is not so the uh, the massive stars erupt they call supernovae and that eruption happens in most of the galaxies everywhere previously uh, like about in 1980s or uh, uh, mid 80s 90s you would get about a handful of them you could detect a handful of them per year kind of a thing now there are like thousands of them because you know that they're going off and you need to study them. So because you're going back and having these surveys to look at them, you not only see them, but a lot of other things. These asteroids will move <laughs> faster. So you can, uh, our telescope in uh, Himalaya, uh, Himalayas, we have a small one, but even that detects a lot of asteroids. So Okay. Um, the reason I'm bringing up asteroids, especially for the audiences, is because I don't think people understand how dangerous massive asteroids can be for the yes, earth yes. it's the equivalent of a human being being shot with a bullet um that's the kind of speed asteroids hit you with so even an asteroid the size of say um a city could actually create a lot of apocalyptic events uh, yeah. on earth and there are asteroids which are as big as cities out there yes uh the speed with which they can hit the earth can create effects on the other side of the earth as well that's how impactful an asteroid impact can be. And that's what destroyed the dinosaurs. Yes. They, there are theories about something called the Younger Dryas Impact Theory, which I've spoken about a lot on the show. Are you familiar with this? Like, yeah, yeah. Around 11,000, 12,000 yeah, yeah. uh, BC, apparently a massive asteroid had hit yes. the Earth, which has given rise to all these stories of Noah's Ark and Gilgamesh. And <laughs> even in India, we have Manu's story. Yeah. Uh, that massive floods took over the Earth. Yeah. Uh, so this is a possibility for the human race living on Earth, that we can be hit with an asteroid, which is why I want to ask you as a scientist that say we're able to detect an asteroid which is going to hit the Earth. Yeah. The protocol will be to nuke it, like to send an atom bomb and destroy it before it hits the Earth? Yeah, so there was a mission recently called a DART mission by NASA. So DART mission uh, actually uh, uh, was targeted to an asteroid and then they actually crashed the... A spacecraft onto the dart, uh, sorry, onto the asteroid. Okay. To see how much they can deviate its uh, orbit path, so they could actually successfully crash crash it and then deviate its path. It actually moved away. Moved. Uh, it's deviated its path. How much I am not uh, uh, not able to remember, but this is a serious mission. Not nuke it, but uh, change its orbit so that okay. it doesn't come and do it. So this is already tested. Yeah. Okay. If we actually throw a nuclear bomb onto one of the asteroids out there, what will happen? It'll just get destroyed fully? Like yeah, vaporize? so you will create a lot of uh, debris and then you'll have to figure out how these debris take care of all those debris. But if it's yeah. actually debris, like see, say that city-sized asteroid that you're destroying with an atom bomb, hmm. uh, you're creating much smaller asteroids from it. Yes. Now those smaller asteroids will melt away in the Earth's atmosphere, right? When they enter, they should melt away. But then when you are actually navigating, they will all cause problems. Like what? Uh, when you are spacecraft is navigating, and if you do not know things, they can come and crash onto the experiment or spacecraft or your, uh, um, what do you say, the solar panels. Okay. So they can actually destroy it. So right now, you you know the asteroid uh, or, or, or the bigger sized objects out there. And then you need to avoid them when you do a deep sea sorry, deep space uh, um, voyages and all that. But if you create certain uh, uh, 
plumes around it even a small particles can damage the spacecraft okay yeah <laughs> so we are actually dealing with a lot of space debris in and around uh, uh, earth but this can cause a lot of debris beyond space what is space see. debris space debris is uh, like unused satellites which still orbiting around As they're all uh, the dead bodies uh, yeah dead instruments which is still orbiting we don't we have lost control we have lost communication with it but still out there and that is uh, uh, we do not know its position what exactly it is so it can there are many play, many times where our our own isro spacecrafts are to be uh, changed its uh, height etc to avoid collision huh? anti collision maneuvers yeah okay wow so that's a big uh, menace now and what's the solution the solution is uh, uh, first one is to identify what is existing there and do a clean up if possible or at least know where they are and second don't create more hmm so uh, the new missions there there has to be much more uh, guidelines etc et regarding how do you how you actually decommission a uh, used spacecraft so the low earth orbit if you look at about 300 kilometers or something like that they actually deorbit and burn in the atmosphere but the higher ones you go it is still uh, uh, they left there and causing problems causing problems and there are now a uh, worldwide networks of telescopes and detection mechanisms where you can actually detect these smaller pieces get their orbit and predict where they can be but i'm sure this will cost money and maybe yeah. the world's governments are not ready to spend money on a problem that's up there i'm assuming that that's the issue no actually it is becoming more because we are getting some satellites damaged and okay. uh, you can't afford to do that Okay. So even uh, in India also there are efforts then there are specific telescopes being set up to monitor the space debris. And not only monitor actually there are even mm, startups and companies trying to model it and sell that this is the data we we have the data but we can actually give you the model and coordinates of the space debris. Okay? So um, this is a uh, yeah interesting area. So if you enjoy this video subscribe to TRS Clips for more.